This is Constant Elevation, the show for rising Air Force and community leaders who seek to define the future, learn powerful work and life tactics to tackle any challenge. I'm your host, Gabriel Gabrock Avila. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody. Gabe Rock back on the mic once again. Hope everybody's doing well in this uh, first or second week. I don't know what it is in September. No, what is the first week of? It is the first week of my kids doing virtual school, right? And so my son, uh, Benjamin, he's going into eighth grade at Crofton uh, Middle School. And so he didn't screw it up. I'll say that. He didn't screw it up. He's trying to figure out what's going on. And then my daughter, uh, um, for those who didn't know, she actually got accepted to the Arizona State University Digital Prep Academy. So she's no longer going to Anne Arundel. She's not an eagle. She's a sun devil. And so she is uh, doing her online courses there, hopefully getting some online uh, college credits, saving me some money. Um, I will say that uh, I wish that Northern Arizona had an online school, but they don't. It's not a big thing because we're a small school, but she's going to Arizona State, so I'm glad that she's staying in Arizona. And uh, this digital online school thing is new, and it's challenging for everybody. I hope that uh, everybody in the audience for your respective, for your careers and your kids, you're trying to figure out the way to make it work because we're all in that boat, right? We just have to make sure that we're trying to covering down, and I hope that if you're in a position of leadership you'd be make some accommodations for the people that work for you to make sure that they are coming down for their kids please do so because this is just some some new stuff that we're not necessarily prepared for but we're going to make we're going to make it the best that we can so speaking of school i'm excited to have my guest on this week so um we are former classmates we are former classmates from 2014 2015 when we both attended uh, United States Marine Corps Command Staff College. I want everybody to please welcome um, my guest this week, retired Sergeant Major, United States Marine Corps, Greg, Greg Harting. Greg Harting with a T. Greg, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Hey, and, and I don't know if you knew, but you know, my son's a Sun Devil as well. Is he? He is. As a matter of fact, I lived vicariously through him for four years while he was in Tempe. <laughs> oh, dude. I think I, maybe I did know that. I know that like as I'm reading, so go into the episode um, episode notes because you have part of your 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 bio is you lived like half in Arizona, half in. Yeah, so I grew up in St. Louis, and then I moved. I lived for about a year in Oklahoma, and then a year about a year and a half in Arizona before I enlisted. Okay, yeah. I was in Arizona, so I'm Arizona, I was an Arizona resident. Now that I'm retired, I'm a Virginia resident. Right. Yeah. My, my wife is an Arizona resident. That's why we got AS. She, Lana was able to join ASU uh, digital prep for free <laughs> because she's an Arizona resident or also would have been seven grand a semester. And I would have been like, snake that you're doing something else. So <laughs> state school, definitely state school. Yes. Yeah. It's a, um, I'm, I'm very happy that my, uh, our daughter is looking towards an Arizona school. I think that's where our, that's the, de the default place where all of us are going to be, moving on to our next live after we get out of the Air Force, whatever it is, and that's where most of our family is. And so it's a, it's a great place. I miss Arizona. I didn't get to go there over the summer, but hopefully I'll be heading there in this, this December uh, for leave. So, but yeah, so Greg and I, um, classmates in the 2014-2015, the, uh, right? The Bazinga years of uh, going to um, uh, um, Marine Corps uh, Command Staff College. It was, it was awesome. I was the token, so here's the thing. I was the token Air Force guy and the token cyber operations nerd guy. And then Greg was the token, that's a strong word, yeah. token illicit guy. The only illicit, I, if I recall, you were the only illicit class member, right? In the entire college. That's right. Yeah, because yeah, it was an experiment. Well, it was, it was year two of the experiment. So they, they had sent two uh, enlisted Marines through the year before, and I was the only one for our year. And then okay. it carried on. You probably don't know this. It carried on for another, probably till 2019. You know, in the NDAA uh, for 2019 or 2020, Congress said no more enlisted personnel at service uh, intermediate top level school. Really? You are not allowed to send them anymore. Okay. I don't know. That. Okay. That's a. That sounds stupid, but that's just me. Well, I, I'm basing that purely on the the interaction and the quality that you brought to our class, and so. Well, so so rumor rumor has it it's the Air Force's fault. That's the only reason I. The, oh. 
<laughs> also, probably true, and so, so, sure, so, I'll take that. <laughs> the rumor, rumor has it that, uh, that the Air Force was mismanaging their quotas, I guess, and, and, would, and I don't know if you guys habitually did that or not. I know the Marine Corps was like one or two a year, uh, but rumor has it there was an Air Force officer that didn't get to go to school and therefore got uh, not passed over but not selected mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and uh, made a complaint, Congress or something like that. And, and so Congress said, knock that off. And then somebody didn't knock it off. So they basically <sighs> banned, they banned enlisted members. <laughs> mm, I want to punch someone right now. <laughs> like that's the the way you're telling the story. I'm not kidding. I want to punch someone in their fucking face. Like I don't know if it's true. I mean, that's rumor control in the break. Uh, fair enough. It, it sounds enough. <laughs> if you're gonna, I heard in the Air Force, ah, I might actually be kind of true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so the program's been discontinued. I was I was pretty disappointed. About huh. Well, we just knew that, like, I, I was I was super impressed when you're in the class. I'm like, no, we have the only enlisted person in the class. I'm like, hell yeah. And I, I loved our class. Our, our, uh, our um, uh, shout out to Colonel Waro. Shout out to Dr. D as far as being the best faculty we could ask for. Um, they created the environment for all, our entire class to just have a really good, a really, like, educational kind of space right and we were we were able to kind of yeah there was the fact we had to get through the you know the, the curriculum and all kind of stuff but they allowed us the space in order to kind of talk and learn from each other and i personally learned a lot i mean like there is a again token airman token cyber guy so like i remember here here we go so some of the favorite stories i have um one of them was like we were going on one of our field trips whatever you call them and so like uh, we had to start in the library and it was cold it was i remember this was cold because i walked in and i had my beanie on and then i was like oh yeah so we're just kind of we're getting ready and stuff like that and you walked over to me you're like hey sir so i need to talk to you real quick and i walked over the corner i was like yeah what do you want and i took over my beanie and then you're like there you go that's what i want <laughs> well, i was like what you're like i just wanted to make sure you're good to go sir and i'm like yeah, I know. I know I'm not supposed to wear it in here, but I was cold. So like, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one, my other favorite story is where, um, it's like kind of a two part story. We had to do our fake briefings to like, whatever it was we're briefing. Right. And, um, I was briefing it to the fake chairman, uh, joint the chief of staff. And then we're done briefing and I, and I, and I finished it and I nailed it or whatever. I didn't, I didn't fail. So that's fine. So I'm finished. And then like at the end, and then the, the, I forget the army colonel was giving me some stuff. Colonel Warrow was giving me some stuff. And I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I went like this. I just leaned, I leaned on a wall. <laughs> and then you're like, what are you, sir, what are you doing? And I'm like, what? <laughs> you're like, it's still part of the briefing. And I'm like, no, the, the we're done. Like I, I finished, like it, it said scene and I don't have to do anything anymore. Like we're already done pretending where well, I'm just trying to learn stuff. You're like, no, you're, you're still, and, and I think you expected me to make sure that, like, no, you have to maintain your customer's courtesies. Like, get the fuck out of here. He's not even the real chief. And so, but you were so on it to be like, you were, you were honestly looking out for me. And I think it just ended up being like a, a thing for you. And I'm like, I'm, I'm good. But, <laughs> and I think, and, and that, that set the tone. I'm like, this fucking Air Force guy, he just is so goddamn casual about everything. So, <laughs> well, I will tell you, you were, um, not as casual as some of the other students, you know. I had, <laughs> I had, I had to talk to another unnamed officer, not at, not in our conference group, about wearing Argyle socks with his uniform, and I was just like, "He had to be kidding me." Really? That? Oh, are yeah. you serious? Oh yeah, he was. A, well, he, and he was a pilot, so that might explain some of it. Okay, Argyle. So, I mean, uh, I'm a fan of Argyle, but not in uniform. Yeah. Like, and he's like, I just keep forgetting to bring the other ones in, and I'm like, "You are just disgusting. You're disgusting." <laughs> you know, but I will tell you that that experience for me, you know, uh, is in my top three. I think in, in my career, in my entire career, it's it's in the top three, probably behind, definitely behind being, you know, a rifle company first sergeant, and then being uh, out on embassy duty. I mean, it's top three, right? So I, I never could have imagined to get paid to just go get educated, right? Right, right. And and that group that we had, you're absolutely right. I mean, we. We were so lucky having having Hawken, having Big Pun, Doctor D, and then you know they set the tone. The cohesion in that group was just, I mean, it right. was it was something to be something to be uh, 
it was, it was just amazing, right? And and uh, and I learned so much. I learned so much. That it know. was. I I I learned a lot about like um, just the camaraderie of the group and just kind of hanging out. And we, I just remember, you know, we had the, the, the fun conversations. They were like, I remember, do you remember Gary? He used to sit next to me. I remember, I still like talking about how Gary, I remember, yes, he had, <laughs> he had, he had, he had the, the resting mean yeah, face. Rest face yeah. Oh my God. And so I tell stories about like, I, I think this was, I'm not, I'm, maybe I'm going to try and take credit for it, but like, we're in the beginning of the class and everybody's just doing their own thing. And then Gary would be like, he'd have his glasses be like, okay. And then he'd drop them. I'm like, Oh shit, son, it's about to go down. Cause I'm next to him. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you know, you guys don't recognize that when Gary takes the glasses off and drops them, he's about to drop some shit and you'll need to look and listen. And so like the idea of, and that's just my, my natural kind of personality. I'm like, I recognize the people and like, you're just passionate about it. Like the stuff he was talking about, nobody in the class was a dick. They just wanted to, they were, we understood we're in the safe environment and we just wanted to talk about stuff. And like you said, uh, Colonel Waro and Dr. D, they allowed us to kind of just do some stuff without getting like completely, uh, we, we, if this was the line, we were like, let's try and go over it a little bit. But they kept us trying to keep it, you know, uh, mainly professional, mainly educational, but allowing us to kind of just share our thoughts and perspectives. And I think that made us all better leaders in the end. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the word I'm thinking about is discourse. And I use this word a lot, particularly now. It, it, discourse, it, yep. Discourse is different from a debate and a discussion. You know, discourse is, is not about being right or wrong. Discourse is about uh, being able to... to, to you know, talk about your position and then try and see other people's position and, and find common ground and, and just understanding, right? It's not about being right or wrong. And so I think they laid that out early for us and said, hey, this is, this is what, we're, what we're having in here is discourse. And that really resonated with me. Um, uh, so, so that when we had all those discussions, it, again, it, wasn't, it was about learning different perspectives. And we had a great diverse population. We did. We did. You know, we had the token, right? Yep. We had, you know, Many tokens. Two, two, yep. Two, two Navy officers. We had a Moroccan Navy officer. We had an Indian, Indian officer. Army infantry guy. Yep. Yeah, we had uh, Army a, battalion a, guy, a, Army or a tank guy, whatever. He, he was armored, but he was never really in the armor. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, sorry. Uh, we, had, uh, we had our Marines, our F 18 pilot, and our Lago, and our you know, uh, maintenance guy. So we had a very diverse group. Was, yes, was, we did. And I think was, had a voice. I think we did. I think all of us like we lucked out and we you, you know you and I heard about like the rumblings about the other classes, like ugh oh. that sucks for you guys, man. Well, I, I went to visit uh Hocken for his next class, the the, the very next Okay. Same experience with his conference group, but uh, whatever. We're the best ever. That's fine. Okay. So <laughs> so right. the how how uh you and i kind of reconnected is because i saw that you posted a quick thing and it talked about your uh the the because acronyms are only make sense when you can create it into a word it's surfs it's simple ru simple rules for success s-r-f-s and so i really i asked you to come onto my show because i really just want to hear i saw it and it made i love connecting with leaders when they have very distinct and very memorable um, leadership philosophies or just kind of points, because I think my audience um, is looking for those, those memorable things, the things that are not overcomplicated. I'm not trying to, I'm not the doctrinal guy to say that here's the, the complicated thing to say how you can be a good officer or leader in the air force or in the military. A lot of this ends up becoming down to just very, very distinct, simple things that are memorable. And I, and I, I think your, uh, your simple rules for success are part of it. So there's three parts to it. And so I'll cover them one at a time. And I want to ask your opinion and a little bit more deep dive based on just the, the quick thing that I saw. So your first uh, simple rule for success is know what you're required to do and do it. Know what you're required to do and do it. Explain. So simple, right? O almost, almost, uh, almost childish how simple it is. Uh, and, you know, it's funny that 
you know, we're talking about command and staff college because that's really where I was able to codify my, my leadership philosophy, right? Like my, what do I believe about leadership? And, and that's one of the, you know, this is kind of a, a, a result of, of that effort. But, you know, I learned early on in my career that, um, that it, you know, if you don't know what, what you're, I saw a lot, of, a lot of folks that just didn't know what they were doing and they were too afraid to ask, right? So, so what I would, the first thing I would say, let me back up real quick. The first thing I would say is these aren't really rules, right? Because rules are imposed on you from an outlet. These are really right. principles, right? But when I try to create an acronym for principles, SIFIS didn't sound as bad. Yeah, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Simple rules for success. But, um, but the bottom line is, you know, it, once you, and, and then, and then, really, the first step is you got to figure out what success looks like, right? What, because success is different for everybody. You know, mm -hmm. I'm watching some of your podcasts, right? Success for some folks is, you know, they want to be a general officer. Success for other folks is they just want to get to the to the end of their enlistment or get to the end of their period or they want to write a book or they want to do whatever, right? So, so you, first you have to define. You start with the end, right? You define what success looks like, um, and then you figure out uh, what you have to do to get there, and okay. Um, there's a lot of different philosophies to do it, right? What's my to be state or, or what's my current state? What's my to be state? How do I get there? A gap analysis. I mean, there's so many, when you, when you talk about, um, success, there's so many different ways to get there, but this was just the simplest way that I could, that I could explain. Like, if you don't know what you're supposed to do, then you're never going to get there. Right, right. Right. So know what you're supposed to do and do it, right? And what do you have to do in order to know what you're supposed to do and do it? You have to be able to communicate, right? You have to be willing to ask, like, what am I supposed to do? And it's different. It's also different whether you're talking about a short-term or a micro-level or a macro-level, right? And is this a long-term? Where do I want to be in my career in 20 years? Right. Or, or where do I want to be on a daily basis? What am I supposed to do in it, you know, on a daily basis versus, mm -hmm. um, you know, what are my daily tasks? Am I doing them? Or what are the things I need to do in my career to hit my wickets, right? So you have to know what those are. That's the bottom line, right? Yeah. It's, it's like the problem with framing stuff we, were, we used to we used to beat up all the time, right? If you don't know what you're after, you're never going to do it. Yep. I, 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 there's a kind of like two different lenses when I look at this. And so when I saw it, um, it's a different, it's like a remix version of like uh, accountability for me. And so like, what am I required to do as an officer? And then what am I required to do in my position currently, right? And so as a field grade officer, depending on what I'm doing, I'm responsible for grooming the people behind me, right? There's a degree of mentorship, there's a degree of um, expertise and um, experience that I lend to a conversation. So I'm required to make sure, you know, they don't know me from Adam, they just know that I'm handsome. And so like, it's a thing of, <laughs> it's a thing of, hey, so he's a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. And so he brings a certain level of experience. And so I, I have to meet that. That's, I'm required, in my opinion, I'm required to offer that to whatever, you know, in my current job in a joint staff, I'm required to give that perspective. But then in addition, it's, it's based on my position. What am I required to do? As a staff officer, I'm required to do slide monkey and I'm required to do, do these talking points for the admiral, whatever it is. And that's fine because I understand how that works. But like when you go into certain positions, if you're going to be a, a flight commander, a, a, a company officer, a squadron commander, you're required. Your, your responsibilities are hella elevated. Like you're responsible for making decisions that, you know, arguably change people's lives, but you're, you're a steward for the air force, you're a steward for the department of defense. And so that's what you're required to do. And when you step into positions like that, you have to understand it's not a fucking game. Like you actually have to take it seriously. Hopefully you are listening to the advisors around you who give you perspective. You talk to your peers and understand that like, yeah, so there's, here's what I'm going to do, whatever it is. But like inevitably, what you're required to do, in my opinion, you're required to lead. That's it. Wherever you're at in your career, I don't care if you're a junior enlisted, junior officer, senior officer, senior enlisted, you're required to lead at the respective position. And that's what you need to do. And, and you know, the, the end of part, ending part of that, know what you're required to do and do it. Do it. That's, I, I really believe that's the most powerful portion of that statement because there's a lot of people who get scared. 
there's a lot of people who get scared of like, oh, I'm, uh, I don't really know. I'm hitting my promotion board. I don't want to, I don't want to rock the boat. Ooh, I'm going to be competing for this award. Fuck all that shit. Like do what's right and just do it. And that's the kind of thing that for a simple rule for success, rule, parameter, whatever word you want to apply to it, that's the kind of thing I think that uh, applies to, uh, to your simple rule for success. No, I think uh, there's two, two kind of pieces I'd like to pull out of that. And, and I, I've seen you discuss it previously on your show, right? And that's kind of the, the, the challenge between the, the being, an, being an officer, right? Officership, the professional aspect of the profession of arms, right? The responsibilities and authorities you have within the profession of arms and then the responsibilities and authorities you have um, within your particular occupational specialty or your building. Right. And I've always looked at those and that, that, that is, there's a constant struggle between those, even, even in the Marine Corps, right. Where it may seem even a little bit uh, clearer. Right. But I've always looked at those as two sides of the same coin that you have to be able to do, you have to know what you have to do within your profession, within the profession of arms. And you have to know what you have to do within your billet and technical responsibilities. And one of the things about that first piece to your point um, is that, you know, when, when, I, when I say this to a, a young Marine or a young Airman, it resonates, right? Because they go, well, it's pretty much black and white what I have to do, just like within your MOS occupational specialty. In many cases, in my experience, in most MOSs, it's pretty clear what you have to do, right? Yeah. You're trained in that. There's a right way to do things. There's a wrong way to do things, right? right? Right, The challenge is when you start talking about the profession, the professional aspect, the profession of arms, the leadership piece, right? And the right, higher right, you right. go, uh, because, because you're working in a nebulous situation, right? Because leadership skills, you don't train leadership skills, right? They're, they're learned experientially, right? So you learn theory, um, but it's like learning how to fight, right? You can learn the theory of fighting, but until you actually- Get punched it, in the mouth. <laughs> if you're fighting, you're not fighting, right? You're right. Just, you're asking, right? So, and it's the same thing with leadership. So you have to get in there and you have to do it. And knowing the right thing to do and doing it when you're talking about uh, leadership and particularly at the higher levels, when you talk about squadron commanders, which is, I think is what you like to focus on, the answers aren't clear cut. Nope. The answers aren't clear cut. You have to work so much harder to figure out what the right thing is to do. Um, and then to your point, have the moral courage to do it. Yeah, that's it. Cases, those things aren't the most popular things to do. They are not. They are not. And that's the kind of stuff that, you know, a, um, I, I try and tell my stories as far as, and it's, you know, I have ups and downs stories, right? But there's stuff that like, did I fall on my sword? Sure. I guess if you want to call it that, but like, there's things in my career that I made the conscious decision. Like, no, this is, I got to stare at myself in the mirror and I have to be comfortable with what decision I made. And, um, depending on it, it's, I'm still in the, the, if you want to call it the midpoint or whatever part of my career, it doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm trying to make the right decisions as I go along. When I decide to hang it up and I get to join the retiree club like you, you and I are going to be in the, the MC. We're going to, we're going to be the guys in the gym. Be like, Hey Greg. And I'm going to wear just like a towel in the gym. Hey oh. Gabe. Like, yep. We're just going <laughs> to, we're going to be hanging out just beating all these young, young kids out here. Be like, yeah, how's it going? Oh, you know, well, I, I, I got my, my groceries and I, I went to the DMV. That's what I did today. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> those kind of things, I want to um, be able to just know, have that peace of mind that I have done the right things when I had the opportunity, because that's all you have. You have, we, we are given, you, over your career, over my career, we're given all these opportunities and we had to make decisions. We had to, we had to do something. And that's what I'm trying to inspire leaders to do. But like, hey, so you got to make a decision. Don't, I, I'm not going to say don't be a bitch, but like, but I said it. But like, have the moral courage to do what's right. That's all I'm asking. And, this, and there's no, like you said, there's no clear answers. There's no manual. Even the book that I wrote is not the de facto thing to say, here's how to be successful. Because I don't know, there's going to be some stuff that changes in, in the Air Force, in the world, whatever it is. All I know is success can be measured as looking in the mirror and be like, I did the right thing. I did the right thing along the way. And I feel comfortable that I, I led my Marines. I led my airmen to the right thing to do because that's what calls in that situation. So. Yeah. And you, and you, you do what you truly believe is right. Yes. 
and that's because again, you're going to make mistakes, and there are honest mistakes. But I think to your point, I, I want to attribute this to Teddy Roosevelt, but I think it was him that said you know, that the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing you can do is the wrong thing. And the worst thing you can do is nothing at all. Right. Mm -hmm. right? So, so you got to take action, but but you got to do what you what you believe is right. And, and, and when you're in command, in, in particular, you know, and I. I spent the last 10 years of my career sitting right next to a guy in command and advising him. It's, right. it's not always easy, right? Nope. You gotta follow your heart, you gotta, you gotta listen to your advisors and you gotta, uh, you gotta do it. But yeah, that's, so inevitably, if you have that C prefix, if you're a commander, if you're on G series orders or whatever it is, guess what your job is? To make decisions. That's yeah. it. And it's not a, it's not a good or bad thing. You know, you don't have, don't worry about those things. Your job is to, make decisions and um and i think that's that's definitely the the bottom line when i um it's it's not a thing about making mistakes not worrying about like what well, I mean, you should worry about like the second third order effects obviously but like the worst thing you could do especially when everybody's looking at you you have the tens or hundreds or whatever it is of people looking at you sir what do you want to do uh, mm -hmm. What the fuck just happened? No, sir, we, we were asking you a question and you have to, you have to step up. So and I think that's, that's a great way to end at least that, that first simple rule for success as far as know what you're required to do and make sure you do it. Follow through, character. That's really what we're talking about. Uh, point number two, know what you're not allowed to do and don't do those things. Explain about, expand about that. Yeah, so uh, again, you know, it depends on scope, right? So, so <laughs> I think, you know, you, you were a squadron commander, so I imagine you probably handled a few, uh, I don't know what you call them in the Air Force, Article 15s. Article 15s, yeah. Yep. Office hours, right? Because you had airmen that probably knew they were doing the wrong thing and they did it anyways, right? So at that level, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. It's pretty black and white. Uh, when you're talking about the level of, you know, as a commander, um, and you're talking about it, it's, it's much more, it, this thing is much more difficult when you're talking about professions like the profession of arms, right? Because we have sure. standards, we have legal standards, right? Yep. We have yep. that we LOAC, have all that stuff. And legally cannot be, right? right? So there's the aspect of the nebulous nature of the job that you're in, right? Um, and, then there's, and then there's the challenge that whole Bathsheba symbol, right? There's the challenge of having that corner sweep, right? Of, of you know, last year I was in the cubicle I was one of a bunch of people making coffee. Now I'm the commander, right? Now I'm in charge. Now I'm powerful. Now I can do things and nobody's going to question me, right? Because mm. I'm, I'm the boss. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, that's how commanders get in trouble. And that's how, yes. um, um, you know, that, that's how it goes south, right? So, so it's important, you know, at that, when you're looking at that, particular perspective that, that you always have to realize, um, you know, commander is responsible for everything that happens and fails to happen. Right. And, and, it, and it's really easy to, to start just doing things because you can. So at the, at the base level, this is like the, the, the lowest level of, um, if you want to call it like, social media like trolling kind of stuff so maybe in the marine corps i'm sure you guys have the equivalent in the air force we have this pace we have this space called the the uh airman nco senior nco page and it is like the where people are th like torched if you're doing something stupid that you're not supposed to be doing you are there is a huge trolling like where people just kind of like pile on and be like, I cannot believe this thing is happening. And it's, it, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird space to be in. But part of the, you, when I was, when I was serving as squatch commander, part of our measurement is like, Hey, so just don't end up on that page. Be <laughs> like, what? Be like, we're like, no, 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 seriously. Just don't end up on that page. Um, because if you ended up on that page, that means you did something like abhorrently wrong. Abhorrently wrong as far as like an illicit person is going to call you out like, what the fuck are you doing, sir? You, you set up a policy, you issued an order, issued an Article 15 that was completely off base. And now like because of the internet, you're going to be like exponentially freaking uh, speared. And so the idea of making sure know what you're allowed, know what you're not allowed to do and don't do it. We're talking about it's if you want to call it a professional restraint. I mean, that's kind of part of it, right? 
and like once you get to a position of authority or whatever it is, don't get that into your head. That is not a free, uh, free ticket to do whatever you want. And you know, it, it's the thing of don't end up on the front co- front cover of Air Force Times. Clearly, I don't want to be sitting in the MCX buying a new uniform and be like, "Ooh, uh, that guy just got busted," you know, doing something he's not supposed to be doing. Like that's a that's an easy thing to do. And I don't know how. I'm sure there's reasons why other people get into those kind of situations. But like, as far as your simple rule for success, yeah, just don't do that. That's it. Like I, I make it really clear as far as saying like, just don't be an asshole. Don't be an asshole just covers so many things. Like just don't, don't sleep with someone that's not your wife or husband. Don't yeah. do drugs. Don't get in a car when you've had too much. Don't do like, just, there's things of just being a good people. So just know what you're not supposed to do or not allowed to do. And then don't do it. Yeah. I think there, there are various aspects of that right there's there's a character aspect there's a you know right has its privileges type aspect Mm -hmm. so there's there's different reasons i think one of the things i try and focus on when i talk to people is 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 to realize that you know command in particular is a privilege right and it's a it's a service position right Right. it's it's command but but if you're a servant leader it's a servant position You're, you're you're there as the steward for for the folks that you command and for that organization so so it's a mindset, right, in many cases, too. If you think about it like that, then, then you don't succumb to, you know, the things that get people in trouble, you know, the, the, the travel charge card stuff, right? Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous, right? It's, it's, it, it doesn't make sense. So, again, simple, right? So simple. So we, simple. We so it. simple, yet people make those mistakes. Right. <laughs> Yeah, they do, and and you know, I think I think they forget their position, right? They forget the, you know, they, they forget that they're just shouldn't do things. Right? They, they forget that they're just really. Don't don't forget you're just a regular human being. I don't give a shit if you're a oh, rank not. of enlisted not. or <laughs> you're not a human being. No, no, no. You're 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 a you're you're handsome. I'm I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a specific specimen of of of, uh everything but like and good looking clear obviously that's a that's in uh, that's an inferred all the time the idea of where as you know you you mentioned about like rank has privileges but like it's not a privileges is man i i saw it i i get really awkward about that i think you do too where like it was a thing of like hey uh sergeant major be like calm the fuck down like just i'm just a normal person i just want to hang out and just talk that's it like there's the, we're trying to, even when I was a squad commander, I'd walk into my work centers and be like, hey, so what's going on, guys? We're like, oh, hey, sir. We're like, what are you guys doing? Just sit down. I just want to talk. That's it. I didn't want to talk about work. I just want to see what's going on in your life. Those are the kind of things. And so like that where you break down, if you want to say break down the barriers, but like just kind of lower them. But like, that's not what I'm here for. I just want to interface with you as a regular person because I want to have a better understanding of what you're going through and how can I help, right? And so, like, even though the the number two is know what you're not not allowed to do and don't do it, it's also a thing of like, what am I allowed? To, how can I empower you? How can I empower you at at any point in time throughout the the squadron or the wing or the uh, the the unit? Be like, I just want to help you because more than likely, you know, depending on between you and I, like, we're caught up in some random dumb battle rhythm shit where we're we're just busy kind of going through things and there's there's some there's some hard charging enlisted hard charging officers out there like sir i got this idea but like okay what do you want do it is it illegal immoral and ethical no okay go fuck i don't care whatever let's just go it i'm gonna let it fly and i'm i'm probably the 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 right person if you're gonna if you work with me I'll let you do those kind of things because I believe in you. If, if, if you're passionate about it and it makes sense and you don't hit those kind of triggers that you, stuff you can't do, I'm probably going to support you. And even if you fail, I don't care. The idea is let's just try it because I'm interested in just promoting that. They're going to get that confidence to be like, hey, so I didn't get in trouble, but I, I, I didn't win, but I got in, I get in trouble. Okay, cool. I'm going to try it again and I'm going to be better. You get those right people who want to kind of advance again, move the ball forward because they realize there's in, in, in certain instances, there's no penalty for is not, failing is a strong word. It's just like, no, it didn't hit the mark, but I'm going to get the, an opportunity to try it again. Yeah. 
That's good insight. That's really good insight. You know, it's all about, it's about, you know, allowing people to, to again, fail, but to make honest mistakes, right? And I think that's where we, you know, we fight this whole zero defect mindset uh, thing, right? That, that I've heard of that. And, and again, I don't know about the Air Force, but I heard of the Marine Corps all the time about, you know, we got a zero defect mindset, zero defect mindset. And I didn't see it that way. I, I, I think that, I think people make mistakes, some are honest, some are, some are not honest, right? And the problem is when you're, which goes into kind of the next, the, the next rule about competition is when all things are equal, if, if one made a mistake and one didn't, then the one that didn't is, is going to excel over the one that did. I mean, right, right. And the fact of the matter is that we have, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but we have the quality of folks that we have in the military nowadays, they're not, they're not making the, the mistakes and they're, and they're not having the issues that we've had in the past, right? It's, right. It's very few of them, so. Yeah. So a good transition. I knew you planned that. So <laughs> item three of your simple rules for success, know who, you're, who, know who you are competing with and do more than them. Know who you're competing with and do more than them. Speak on it. Yes, I'm going to preach. Okay, so, um, so I think all performance is relative, right? It's relative to, again, who you're competing with or whatever the benchmark is. I would say first and foremost, though, number one, character matters here. Character is paramount. Right? So when I say, Always. when I talk about know who you're competing with and do more than them, more than them, it's not about climbing up on the back of somebody else. It's not about stepping on somebody else to 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 get ahead, right? I would say first and foremost, you compete with yourself, right? That's who the challenge is. First and foremost is with yourself. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now that said, um, you know, because again, we want to we want to do things in an ethical manner. Now that said, it, if you have a a goal. Right? If what success looks like, uh, whatever success looks like to you, if you're competing with other people to get there and there's a finite amount, as you talked about before, you have to know who you're competing with and you probably have to do a little more than them if you're gonna, if you're gonna meet that goal. I mean, sure. that's the bottom line, right? The, the question is how are you gonna, you know, the real challenge is how are you gonna do it? Bottom line is I think if you have a goal uh, that is a goal of other people, uh, and you don't know who you're competing with, then you're probably not going to meet the goal. That's the bottom line, yeah. in, in my experience. Uh, yeah. I think that's fair. I think there's there's an idea of where understanding the your peer group and how hard they're going to be working about things, and like, are you are you just willing to do a little bit more? You got you got to dig deep. You got to have that that honest stare in the face and be like, "Hey, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my hands dirty, or I'm gonna do things, and it's gonna suck." But like the long term, the short term is gonna suck, but the long term is gonna benefit not only myself but my team because that's the right thing to do. And so, the idea of I like the when you started talking about the the competition is not necessarily externally. It could be that, that it is what it is. But it's really the thing of internally competing with yourself. Like, no, 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 just maybe you go a little bit outside your comfort zone because that actually can do that development, that growth that gets you to become a better leader. They get your team to kind of like believe in themselves a little bit more. Be like, no, this is actually, holy shit, I, I'm in a safe space where like the boss or whatever it is, like, let us, let us do some stuff. I'm like, yeah, I can actually do more. Okay, cool. Let's go really, really fast. Um, I'm really big fan of doing things before people can react to it. That's really weird to say out loud, but that's fine. So <laughs> the, <laughs> the idea of um, competition, I think it's, it's not a negative thing. You can see it as like, no, no, no. It's, 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 it's a going back to character is like, no, no, no. We're not bullshitting this thing. In, in our business, we actually have to really – Think about when you're talking about the the lives and the men and women that we're responsible for at the at the higher at the higher levels of leadership that you and I have served in. Those are important, and we want to make sure that we're pushing people to be confident to to get to advance the 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 mission to the next level to where they end up becoming. They, they, they get the buy-in. They get the buy-in to be like, no, this is your thing now. And all of a sudden, you're like you're like the dad lit, holding onto the bike, and you're like, no, 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 I, I let go. And you're like, look at look at. Look at my mother. That's right. Yeah. They just they just wrote it there because they understand that they're in a safe space to be like we we allowed 
them to just really could believe in themselves because they had it in there all the time. And I would say from a leadership perspective too, it's, it's not just having a safe space and, and, a, and a space where you're, you know, you're validated and you're allowed to challenge yourself, but, but it's about setting expectations, right? Because, because again, people, you know, they don't rise to the occasion on their own, right? They, they, they fall to the level of expectation. So as a leader, from a leadership perspective, it, you know, you want to foster that healthy competition and you want to set expectations of high performance and make people compete to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You, and that, but you do, again, you do it in a, in a not in a toxic manner. Right? No, no. You, you, do it, you do it in a healthy manner. Um, and that, uh, and then well, that's I, good. Yeah, I, I have, uh, it's, it's not, okay, so this is, a, this is a very much lower threat threshold of what we're talking about, but like, I challenge my son, Benjamin, we have a 3K route that we run every single, once a week on the weekend. I'm like, hey, so we're going to do, because he plays soccer, and I'm like, we got to do running. And I told him, I'm like, you need to hit like a sub-19 time frame, please, because this is going to be it. And we, we, it's a good father-son time. And we talk about, you know, he wants to talk about video games, all that kind of stuff. All right, that's cool. And then we get to like the last like hundred meters. I'm like, there's a sprint. And I'm like, he only beat me once. And, and Greg, I swear to God, I tell you that one time he beat me, I fucking didn't like it. And so he will never, ever beat me ever, ever, ever. But like, um, we go through the whole thing and it's a whole thing of, Hey man. So I think you can hit sub 18 though. He's like, ah, it's going to, it's going to be really uncomfortable. Like, yeah, no, I know, but it's in you. Like we're bullshitting the entire time. If you actually put your head down and actually train for this entire thing and compete with yourself, you can do this. I know you can do this. And he's like, and then I had to bait him. Like, I'll give you $10 if you beat it. <laughs> and he's like, a bet money. And I'm like, all right, fine. I don't care. So again, context, right? The, 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 the people you're trying to lead, uh, my son, your son, Michael, the Marine Corps, like there, there's things you're trying to inspire in people to be like, Hey, so, understand that like your biggest competition potentially is yourself. How about you challenge yourself, create these things to be like, be, get out there and do things that are uncomfortable, do things that actually don't um, get you out of your comfort zone and whatever it is, but more than likely you're going to survive. And then you're going to become a better leader. Hey, love, <laughs> you're going to become a better leader amongst the entire thing at the end of the story. So off topic, but you just, Right, reminded me of two stories I got to tell real quick. Yeah. So, so the first story is about how Michael, my son, uh, when he was young, we used to play video games all the time, and I used to whip his ass all the time. And then one day, yeah, you did. Just out of the blue, he whipped my ass, right? And I didn't know what happened. I was like, I was beat. I didn't know what happened. It was like whiplash, right? And I never played video games with him again. All right, but anyways, so the other story was the Marine Corps marathon or the, the half marathon. Yeah. Remember the half marathon? I do. Yeah, when, when, when you showed up in your short silkies, I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, I had some, oh, I had some silkies on. <laughs> short silky. You know, so you, you show up, the most fit guy out of the conference group there, the token Air Force guy, right? The most fit guy in the conference group, and you show up around in like 50 minutes or something. I don't, I don't know what it was. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. But, but I remember <laughs> that because it was so terrible for me because I never enjoyed running. Right, talking about challenging yourself, right? Like I only ran because I had to, you know. Of course, of course, yep. Did I tell you that? Yes, you did. The longest I ever ran on purpose in my life up to that yep. point. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. And I was so chagrined that the Air Force guy just killed me. But also, I was so happy. I was like, is the token Air Force guy going to actually be the fittest guy? You fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the Air Force, right? Air Force generally has good judgment, and they would have they would have they would have exercised some really poor judgment had they sent a, a fat, out of shape Air Force officer to Marine. Oh, Marine yes. It, <laughs> I, I will. I will say. I think when I was talking to my wing commander at the time, I'm like, sir, I'm just saying, like, if you're gonna send anybody to the Marine Corps school, please. I don't know how the, I, I wasn't aware how the boards work and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, I'm just saying, let's not embarrass ourselves. But that, but that, but that when I got there, there was that pressure. I'm not kidding. Like there is a pressure of like, fuck. Okay. Don't, don't. Oh, well, it's the same pressure, right? Right. It's that insecurity. That's, that's, that's 
you know, part of the reason I worked so hard there is because I had that insecurity being the only Muslim guy. Yeah, yeah. That, both you and I had the same thing. And I'm like, no, it's just, it's a, but it was a, if you call it positive insecurity, sure. And I was like, no, 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 this, this is a, I'm not going to, I'm not going to embarrass my service. I'm not going to embarrass the enlisted core. I'm like, no, we're going to show out exactly what we can, we, we can do. And I think it, in our environment, it ended up being the best thing ever. It was like, nobody in the end, no, actually nobody give a shit. Like <laughs> it was, it was a thing of like only Greg and Gabe cared about those things. Like, no, no, no. We really cared about those things. Like noted, nobody cares about that. So good on you. And that's fine. Insecurity is a huge motivator. It is huge motivator. Yes, yes, but I I saw it as a good thing of, uh, you can call it insecurity. I, I you could also call it I give it a shit. I give a shit. I just want I I care, and and so I I'm doing that thing for my kids, right? My my kids, especially Benjamin. He 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 is minimal minimal give a shit. This fucking dude, and so. I'm trying to motivate him accordingly um, for his soccer stuff and going into eighth grade. Luckily, Lana's okay about her academic stuff, but those kind of things that um, trying to be that good, you call it, it's not a role model thing, but like just care about what you're, what you're putting forward. Be, be, com- competition is a strong word because some, some people get, excuse me, intimidated by that, but like, just give a shit, give a shit about what you're putting out there. Cause your name is on there. Yeah. Greg, Greg's name was exactly how every, your entire year you're going through the school year, me as well. Like, no, this is how I'm going to represent myself. And I think uh, at least for myself and I'm sure for you, I'm very proud as far as the, the work effort that I put through the things that I learned, the things that Colonel Waro and things that Dr. D taught me, the rest of the classmates taught me, that helped me elevate myself constantly elevation <laughs> be oh. a better a hey. <laughs> i did it yeah yeah you got it that's fine so <laughs> the idea of becoming a better leader was a result of people like you people like a Colonel Waro, people were like dr d like that's the kind of stuff that i wanted to make make sure that i was not just kind of washing it uh, away on the wayside and i was i was paying attention because it made me a better leader. Well, it seems to me you've, you've taken a lot of that just, just from what you're doing here. I mean, I, I did as well. I took a lot of that and, 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 and I continue to apply a lot of the things I learned and, and, and those experiences and, and, and not even just the technical things I learned, but just the, the theory behind it, right? This constant education, this constant development, uh, leadership development, those kind of things. And, and clearly you have taken that and, and all the other things and, you know, now you're writing books and you got a podcast, you know, and you're, and you're just some shit, just some small shit over here that I'm doing on the side hustle. Things on the weekend, right? <laughs> Not that nobody, nobody's gainfully employed. That's fine. <laughs> What's that? What's that? It, it's, it's a good idea that like I can be gainfully employed, also do a podcast and uh, reunite and have some little adult drinky poos with my friends mm-hmm. and just kind of talk about stuff that's important. That, that, that's what I'm trying to figure out uh, amongst all these things. I'm not a, I don't position myself as an expert in anything. I just like doing shit. So, all right. So, you have passion. You have I do. Passion. I do have passion. It's very important. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, okay. So, simple rule for success recap know what you're required to do and do it, know what you're not allowed to do and don't do them, and then know who you're competing with and do more than them. I really, really think your simple rule for success, Greg, are that's the, when I saw that pop up in my, in in my feed, I was like, dude, I just want to just, that's enough. I know that's going to create the stories. You and I are going to be able to talk about reminisce about good old times and just kind of talk about how, uh, um, the, the unique perspective that, uh, military leaders need to gravitate towards. And I think that makes sense. I, I like I like simplicity in things. You know, it's a simple rules, simple, whatever you want to call them. Those things end up becoming, I always advise people like, don't, especially officers, like stop trying to, uh, you come out of you. Okay. You went to, you went to IDE. Cool. I swear to God, do not start talking about your dissertation of bullshit and bullshit. Like nobody gives a fuck about that. Swear to God. Tell me what you want. Tell me your genuine opinion of how you 
grew about things and what your thoughts are. And that's where my, you know, my things about my leadership philosophy, obviously yours with the simple rules for success, that's the kind of stuff people gravitate towards. And that's why I'm very appreciative of you coming on to the show this week, sharing your stories and uh, talking shit up with me of all these kind of things, reminiscing stuff. It was super awesome. Um, I'll pass it back to you for any final comments that you have. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, one, I, you know, again, we're making history here. This is my first podcast. Yeah, it is. Uh, and, uh, and I got, and, and as I said earlier, I got super motivated. My morale shot up when I realized I could drink beer on the, on the podcast. So, <laughs> so maybe the wrong thing. Uh, but no, beyond that, you know, to your point, simplicity is important, right? And, and, and these things that one thing I'm learning as a retired person now, as a, as a retired uh, Marine is that, the things that you and I, these things we talk about, this leadership stuff, a lot of the things that we take for granted doesn't exist elsewhere, right? It doesn't, no. It doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm realizing as, as I've left the military and the things that's just common sense to me, like care about your people, right? Like <laughs> communicate with them, keep them informed, you know, just the simple things that we do uh, don't necessarily exist <laughs> outside. It, 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 it's really, and not as intuitive as we think it is. Um, and and the, the more that you can work at ensuring that it exists in the Air Force and that, and that there's good leadership there is. Uh, so, so because everybody leads eventually, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody leads eventually. Uh, and so I think your focus on squadron commanders is, is exceptionally important because of the, the, the high level responsibility they have for everything that happens and fails to happen in the lives of the, of the airmen and the, the, that they command. I mean, that, that is an awesome responsibility that very few people um, get to hold, right? Yeah. And so to focus on that and to be able to, uh, to help those officers and, and, and improve their leadership skills, is, it's pretty noble. So, so super impressed with what you're doing and, and, and absolutely honored that you were able to, or, or that you, you asked me to come on. Of course, man. Oh, this is, honors is shared on this side too. There's definitely a, um, I, I, we were talking about a little bit before during the podcast, I get to interview whoever the fuck I want. And it's amazing. The idea of like, no, I want to interview the people that I respect. They interview the people that inspire me. You're definitely on that list. There is a, you didn't, you didn't know this, but like the idea of like, God damn it. Like, okay. There's a, there's an E9 in this class. Okay, I need to not be a fucking bitch. Like, there's a, there's a, there's a certain time, and like, it, just because you know, I, I'm a son of, and I'm like, no, I'm, I have to, I have to show up and make sure I do these things. And um, there is a, you, you don't know this, but there is definitely um, a level of of mentorship that you have given me that I have not thanked you for, and I'm going to publicly thank you for it right now. Uh, because it's gonna, I'm getting emotional about the whole thing, but like, thank you. I'll just say that. Thank you for that. There is a point in time in my life, stuff happened. My my dad, my my father passed when you and I were going through class, and I'm not, I, I I'm not, uh, um, I'm not. It, it was not a thing that passed me that like, you were in the class with me. And we had, we shared words. We had the, the class shared words and everybody was supportive of me. And um, I, I did my best to make sure that I took, took care of my business and my family and make sure that uh, I'm trying to pay it forward for my time in the military and the Air Force. And so Greg, I'm not kidding. You are you are a definite inspiration for me to make sure that like, do not, do, don't fuck it up because there's, I, I come from a space where like I like the pressure to make sure that I'm doing things right. And you're one of those perspectives of like, no, 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 I can see you with your arms crossed and just fucking in your bar and just watching me. That's fine. <laughs> I'm just like, no, just seriously, how about you don't fuck this up? And I'm not. And I, I'm going to work very, very hard continuing to until the time I hang it up. And so, um, hey, brother, cheers. I appreciate you being part of the this week's show and um all the perspective you shared this week uh this has been awesome 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 stuff shout out to bazinga shout out to the marine corps uh, command staff college for uh, graduating 
random ass students like myself and Greg and, <laughs> and uh, um, for the, the rest of the constant elevation uh, audience, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you for tuning in this week. Peace.